Utani tangulia Sita ogo pacho chote Kuwa mkoro wako Kweli umeni bariki Kuwa mkoro wako Kweli umeni bariki Yahweh, 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 Yahwe
Wapenda tunashukuru kwa vile mmesimama pamoja na kazi ya Bwana na kama vile tunavyojua hali imekuwa ngumu kwa wengi wengi wamefutwa kazi 
wengi pia wamepoteza biashara zao lakini tunaye Mungu ambaye hata kufuta kazi tunaye Mungu bado ambaye anakujali kuliko hata vile unavyojijali kama anaweza kushughulikia ndege angani Mungu atakushughulikia kwa hivyo hata wakati huu tunapoenda kutoa ninaamini kwamba kila ambacho kiko mikononi mwako kinaweza kuleta utofauti katika maisha yako na katika kizazi chako katika kazi yako katika biashara yako na katika kila hali ambayo una, una, unasema kwamba haiwezekani kwa sababu mkono unaotoa ndio mkono unaobarikiwa kwa hivyo hata tuombe kwa sababu hayo matoleo na naamini kwamba utabarikiwa kushinda vile unavyofuaza wacha tuombe baba katika jina la Yesu kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu ambao unajua kubariki bariki huyu mpendwa ambaye anaenda kutoa rasilimali anaenda kutoa mali yake kwa sababu ya kazi yako Bwana unajua kazi yake unajua biashara yake unajua hata mahali ambapo ameajiriwa unajua hata kwa sababu hiyo hali imetendeka na kufutwa kazi wewe unajua lakini anapotoa hii mbegu kama sadaka ninaomba utamfungulia milango ninaomba utampanua ninaomba utambariki Jehova baraka zako hazina majuto siku ya leo katembee na ukafanye miujiza kawainue kawaponye katika jina la Yesu nimeomba na kuamini amen good morning church i am praising god this morning because of this opportunity that he has given me so that i may be able to share the word of god with you i don't take it for granted because uh, the times that we are living in uh, it needs a lot of grace and so i just want to thank god for you also because the lord is our ebenezer this far he has brought us he has protected us and he has been with us um um i would like to to speak on a on, on a sermon that i've titled deep intercession still needed or deep intercession still required as a church and as believers we are very much aware that this plague am at this plague of coronavirus it is only god who will drive it away it is only god who will end it even if they'll come a cure a, 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 a cure or um, a medication that people will take or even if it's a vaccine whatever it is that, that shall be invented it will still have to be god because whoever will come up with a, a whatever cure it will still be god who has given him a little bit of his wisdom and so it is only god who is going to take away coronavirus he may just sweep it away he may just what he he will do as god through his manifold wisdom he is able to take away corona and so we are co-workers together with christ jesus and so we need to continue praying and we need to continue interceding and so i would like to read the the word of god in the book of matthew chapter 8 uh, from verse 5 the bible says that when jesus had entered capernaum a centurion came to him asking for help lord he said my servant lies home paralyzed and in terrible suffering jesus said to him i will go and heal him the centurion replied Lord I do not deserve to have you come under my roof but just say the word and my servant will be healed for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes I say to my servant do this and he does verse 10 When Jesus heard this he was astonished and said to those following him I tell you the truth I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith shall we pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you dear Lord because of your word your word is life and your word 
it's able even to discern the thoughts of men. And your word has power in it. And so, Lord, as I speak your word to your people and even to myself, I ask you in Jesus' name that you may use me as a vessel, that the Holy Spirit will minister to the hearts of your people this morning in the name of Jesus. We worship you and we thank you even as we sit at your feet to listen to your word. Minister to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we see in this uh, instance, there was this man, he was a Roman soldier, and he was a Gentile, a Roman soldier and a Gentile. And these Roman soldiers, they were much, much hated by the Jews because they worshipped gods who are not Jehovah. And also, they worshipped idols, and also... They represented those people who, the government that colonized the Jews. And so this man, he came to Jesus. He was a humble man. He was a wealthy man. He was a centurion, but he was humble. And we see that though he had a high rank in the army, he had around 100 soldiers who used to report to him. And he used to command them. They were under his command. He knew that his high rank cannot bring healing to his servant. And so he acknowledged and recognized the authority and the power that Jesus carried. He knew that the overall power that Jesus had, God is the overall authority. And so he came to Jesus and he pleaded with Jesus and he told him that my servant, where we have read in, uh, in, verse, in verse 5, uh, uh, he, he told him in verse 6, Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. When you read it in Luke uh, chapter 7, this, uh, this incident is also recorded there. In Luke chapter 7, the, 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 this person went to Jesus. And the Bible says in verse 1, when Jesus had finished saying all this in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There was a centurion servant whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion said to Jesus, send some, uh, uh, the centurion heard of Jesus and sent elders from the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. The man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built a synagogue. And so Jesus went with them. And so as a church and as a believer, I just want to say that deep and much, much intercession is still needed in this period and in this season. I don't know what you feel or what you view, what's your perspective when you see so many people dying in the world. Many people are dying worldwide. Some of them are dying and they don't even know Jesus. I don't know how that clicks to you. We need to pray. We need to ask God for we need to, to really come to God and implore him and to pray to him and ask him to take away the plague because he's able, he's able. And this soldier, he demonstrated humility. He was not an arrogant man. He was not prideful regardless of his rank in the army, of having many people under him. But he humbled himself because he acknowledged the power that Jesus carried. He acknowledged the authority that Jesus has over demons in the name of Jesus. And so I am here, my friend, my brother, and my sister. And I'm just requesting you and asking you that, you know, our prayers they are very, very important at such a time like this. If you have been praying, if you have been interceding, I just want to request you that you just continue. There is a lot of power in your prayer. When you pray, God will do something. God is able to change the situation. And so we see that this centurion, it was not him who was sick. It was not him who was lying in the house almost dying. It was not his wife. It was not his child. 
but it was his servant. And he came to Jesus because of his servant. That is intercession. And he prayed to him that he should come and heal his servant. And so even us, we need to come to God and pray because of the people who are dying, because of the coronavirus. Let us work together with God. Let us work together with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, I would like to read that first. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, that the Bible says, sorry, the Bible says that uh, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot ex uh, express. And so the Spirit is able to pray in us with much groaning. We should allow the spirit man, the inner man who is in us, to pray to God. Because at times, even you don't know, many a time we don't even know what to, to tell God. But if you allow, and especially those who can speak in tongues, allow the spirit to pray in you concerning the things that we are seeing, concerning the things that are in the world. And so this Roman soldier, we are told in Luke, that he sent elders of the Jews to go and speak with Jesus. And when they went and Jesus was going to his house to come and heal this servant, the, the verse 6 says that when Jesus was with these people, he was not far from the house. When this centurion uh, came to him and told him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for that I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. And you know this guy, he, he, he knew that he was a Roman soldier. He, was a senior, he had a high rank, but he was a humble person. And so we, need to, we, we see that this person, he demonstrated faith that even Jesus, he commended him for his faith. And so we should continue to pray. We should continue to intercede because ultimately the answer will come from God. The answer for coronavirus, the, the driving away for coronavirus will, will, will come from God ultimately. And so this man, he was considering himself not worthy. You see, he was a wealthy man. He had even built a synagogue for the Jews but he was considering himself unworthy. And so even us, we need to humble ourselves. We need to go before God and ask him to help us, to help even the whole world, to help the presidents of the world. Because this coronavirus, it like has brought everything to a standstill. It is you and me and the other person that we are supposed to call upon God. Our prayers are much needed. We need to pray in, uh, uh, deeply, interceding for the people. It is us who carry the Holy Spirit of the living God. It is us who can pray and God will do something in the name of Jesus. And so, I would like you to look at this man. He was telling Jesus, he was talking to Jesus and he was telling him, I am a soldier myself. And I have people under me. I tell this one go and he goes. I tell this one come and he comes. And I have even servants. I tell a servant do this and he does it. And that's the same way you Jesus, you are able to do. And so he came to Jesus and he implored him and he asked him to come and heal his servant. And Jesus was able to heal this servant because he spoke a word to this man. And so the Bible says that, that, uh, uh, that this man, he, he was a man of faith. He was a man of humility. He was a man who was respected in the society, but he recognized the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, the power that Jesus carried in him. It was God's power. And so when we come again to, to the book of John, the book of John chapter 4, the book of John chapter 4 from verse 46, the Bible says, 
The Bible says that uh, once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, Come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, you may go. Your son will live. We also see this man, he was an, a, a nobleman. He was somebody who was a senior person. The Bible is calling him a royal official. And so we see that this man, he acknowledged that Jesus had power to heal his son. And so he came to Jesus and he begged him. And the Bible says that he begged him to come and heal his son. And Jesus, he, he, he rebuked, you know, he, he just spoke like he was spoke, speaking to this man and addressing all the, all the people who were around there that the, 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 that Jesus, you, uh, Jesus replied, unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. But you see, Jesus rebuked them because they always wanted to see miracles. But this man, I admire his, you know, he, he, his persistence. He was not discouraged. He was not disheartened. He just continued to speak to Jesus. You know, I was reading this this uh, verse, and it was, I was so amused in, uh, in verse uh, 49. The Bible says that this man, when Jesus told him, unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. You see, he continued, he did not feel bad that Jesus had told him that. He did not get discouraged. He did not you know, get disheartened, but he just told him, sir, come down before my child dies. And then Jesus told him, you may go, your son lives. And the Bible says that the man took Jesus at his word and departed. And while he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired as the time when his son got better, they said to him, the fever let him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time which Jesus said to him, your son will live. And so him and all his house, they believed. You see, I'm looking at this, uh, this incident and I am seeing yet this man he must have walked a long distance to go to Jesus because he acknowledged that only Jesus was able to heal his son. And so you see he's talking to these people and they are telling him yesterday at such a time like this. So he, he must have slept over and continued with his journey. And so I am here to tell you that we still need to continue to, 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 to intercede and to pray because right now, even if you are going to a job, I'm sure you are not going every day. Everybody, is, nobody is that busy except the medics and the other people who are working, the, 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 the guards and such people. But us, even myself, we are not uh, going to work every day. We are even working from home. And so what I'm, I'm here to tell you is that we need to continue interceding. We, we can learn from these two men. They were senior people. We see a royal official. We see a centurion. Somebody who has, you know, he has everything. But he acknowledges that only Jesus is able to bring healing. Only Jesus is able to restore. And so this disease, you can see as a church, number one, it has deprived us that you know, that warmth of coming together and fellowshipping together. We cannot even greet one another like we used to do. And so we should pray for God to restore us again as a fellowship. We need to continue. You know, you look at the disease, how it's killing people. But even in the church, what has it done to us? We are no longer praying together. We are no longer hugging one another in love. We are no longer fellowshipping with one another. And so we should continue to intercede that the church will be restored 
uh, as soon as it is possible. Uh, I want us to learn from these people. They were respectable people, but they humbled themselves and they came to Jesus. They came because of other people. It is not them who had the problem, but they came because of other people. And they prayed to God and God did that which they asked of him. You know our prayers, they are very, very, very uh, precious before God. God loves to hear when we pray. I was reading in the book of Revelations, chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 8, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says that uh, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saint, went up before God from the angel's hand. And so we see that right at the throne of God, there are those golden, the golden censers that the prayers of the saints, they are put there. And with the, they are like incense before God. They are like incense before God. And so my brother and my sister, we need to continue to pray. We need to continue to intercede for the world and for the church, for our country, Kenya, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the medics. We pray even for the leadership who are taking care of those who are sick. We pray even for those who are infected. We thank God as well for those the Lord has delivered from the plague so that the plague can stop in Jesus' name. During the Old Testament time, just like in our times, uh, the Lord had had, had made his precepts known to the children of Israel, his people. They knew how they were to walk with him. It was, you know, he had imparted values in them. And the Lord, whenever these values, they were like broken, or people did not walk according to the values that God had put in them, we can see that God used to break out on them. He used to bring plagues on the people. But when people prayed, something always used to be done. Sometimes a sacrifice. Like in Numbers 25, you can read what Eliezer did to, 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 when, he, when, when, when the plague had broken out from the Lord. In, uh, even in, in the book of, uh, of Chronicles, we see David counting the fighting men and 70,000 had lost their lives because a plague had broken out on the people and they used to sacrifice at times and also pray prayers of uh, repentance. In our time, we cannot uh, offer sacrifices because... Uh, Jesus has already given a sacrifice once and for all his blood. So ours is to just pray because we know that Jesus, he is also praying together with us. We need to continue. Deep intercession is still required, is still needed. And num uh, number two, the Bible says that enter into your chamber I in Matthew uh, chapter six, enter into your chamber and pray to your father who sees in the secret. And so it is a good thing that you set time apart each day, even in the night, and go into your inner room and intercede. It is our prayers. We must work together with God. We must intercede and implore God. We must humble ourselves like this, uh, this Roman soldier, like this um, this official, this nobleman who was, who was praying to Jesus, who was interceding to Jesus to pray, uh, to, to heal his son. And also we can see also in number three, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19, the church, the Bible, the, Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so we have Jesus who is speaking these words that he has given us the power. He has given us the key. 
that whatever we bind on earth, it will be bound. Whatever we lose, it will be loosed. It is us to pray. It is us to stand in the gap and to pray. And number three, we have Jesus as our role model. In Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7, the Bible says that during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and the, uh, uh, to the one who could be able to save him from death. And so we see that we should continue to intercede. To see choke, we should not uh, grow weary, but let's continue to intercede. It may take time, but at the end of the day, God is coming. God is coming. Coronavirus, God is above coronavirus in the name of Jesus. Let us continue to intercede. In the book of Timothy, uh, First Timothy chapter 2, all kinds of prayers be made, petitions and even intercessions and thanksgivings. We should pray for the leaders. We continue to pray and to intercede in the name of Jesus. And so my brother and my sister, in this season of, uh, that the world has like come to a standstill and God is the one who is reigning, reigning as all, he has always reigned. And I saw presi a, a president praying to God, and I said indeed, people are starting to acknowledge that the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, is reigning and has always reigned. And so I urge you and I request you that you make time for prayers of intercessions. We still need to continue to make deep prayers of intercessions. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you, the Lord protect you in the name of Jesus. I uh, would like to end from there that we can pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for your word. We acknowledge and we know that you are the answer to coronavirus. <clears throat> we believe that ultimately it is you that shall bring a solution. We believe in you, Jesus, and we call upon your name. We pray to you, Jesus, that, Lord, you may heal those who are in hospitals, those who have been in infected, Lord. We stand in the gap this morning, and we pray for them, dear Father, that, Lord, you release your touch upon them, that you may heal them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, those who are in quarantines, we know that it's not easy to be in such a place, oh God looking, anxious, you don't know the result that will come. We pray for your grace upon their lives in the name of Jesus. We pray for the uh, med medics, oh God. My Father, may you love them, may you keep them, and may the grace of God be upon them. May you shield them from, uh, from being infected with coronavirus in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We thank you, Father. How we pray in Jesus' name that you would restore us in fellowship once again in the name of Jesus. And we sprinkle the blood of Jesus on our nation, O oh God. On the borders of our nation, O oh God. Protect this nation in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you, dear Father, even those countries that people are dying every day, we ask you, dear Father, that you may intervene you may intervene in the name of Jesus. We desire to see your intervention in this whole issue in the name of Jesus. We magnify your name. We exalt you, Jesus. There is no other God like you. In Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. <music>
Nyesha upendo 